What's up guys, today we are going to build a form component. It's actually going to be a set of components which will basically form this uh, wrapper for our form. Now our form will have several different options, different types of the inputs and so on. Let's start with, with the first one which is the drop down menu. You can see on the left hand side here the title is changing whenever we change the value obviously. First name Sebastian, as you can see some of the fields have been pre populated when the form first loaded as well. So these are standard text fields and then we have email field as well. So let's say info ssdtutorials.com. You can see obviously the values are updating within the view console on the left hand side. And then we have a password as well. Let's say uh, password. There we go. And the exclamation at the end, as you can see as well, that has updated. So these are the standard fields. Then we go to the checkboxes and we're going to build a four different types of checkboxes. In a console on the left hand side, you can see we have this share entry, which when checked is represented by letter A. When we uncheck it, you can see that changes to B. And now you will be able to associate any type of value for checked and unchecked. So that's one type of there checkbox. The other one, you can see that we don't have privacy on left hand side. But if I check this box, that adds it to the index with the value set to true. If we uncheck it, that disappears from the list of items. Then we have this I agree with terms and conditions in this case, and it simply changes a flag from false to true for these terms here. Uh, so that's uh, three of them. And then on the right hand side, we have a group of checkboxes and they will simply add values to the array in these colors here. So uh, have a look at the console when I'm actually checking them on the right hand side. So you can see blue, green and orange. And at the moment we have strings, but obviously we'll be able to uh, associate integers as well or any other type of value that you would like to associate with these checkboxes. When I uncheck them, they are disappearing from this array. Then we're going to have a radio button as well city we have three pre-selected uh, when you change it that value changes as well on the right hand side we have a, a multi-select and this multi-select is for the fruit index we have banana and apple pre-selected if i click on apple only uh, the banana goes off and if i select them all obviously all these items are being added uh, you can add one by one and so on uh, then we're going to have a text area as well. The excerpt, if I just change it to say uh, some other content goes here, you can see this also updates on the left hand side. We'll also add CK editor to our form component. You can see we have this body with the HTML tag. So let's change it to heading goes here, then return and some content uh, goes here as well. Obviously, I would have to expand this a little bit so you can see the entire sentence. So all this is updating. As you can see at the bottom and at the top, we have a set of buttons, one to submit the form, the other one is to reset it. And, and the last one is to clear it. Now, reset will reset the form to its original value. So if we had any values already uh, pre-populated within this form, then reset, if I just hit it, you'll see all the values which we've added are removed, but the ones that were the originally are staying. So all the checkboxes and everything else uh, remains as it as they were originally. Now, if I hit uh, clear, that removes everything from the phone. So all pre-selection also goes. Okay, then we have this sub now top buttons are outside of the form tag, whereas the bottom ones are inside of the form tag and both of them work exactly the same way. So we learn how to do this as well. Now, if I hit submit, you'll see we're going to see this dialog at the top. So we learn how to do these dialogues for errors, for uh, confirmations and so on. And as you can see, we also have the validation with the message. And when uh, the field has invalid input, it will also have this uh, red color. But that's entirely up to you if you will want to use it or not. But we're going to go through this as well. So if I, for instance, check these boxes, uh, we're going to have different types of validation as well if I hit submit again. So these messages obviously are uh, disappearing here. We have to select uh, between one and two. So if I select two of them, it's all going to be fine. If I select the third one, you'll see that we are getting the validation message. Maximum we uh, of items should be two. And uh, what else can I show you here? I think that's pretty much everything for now. Uh, for the password, we're going to use uh, the regex as well. Um, all this to come later on. So this is the basic form. Now, later on, we're going to also learn how to do multi checkbox. So say we have the form a list of items where you want, let's say, certain items to be 
removed or exported to CSV or anything like this. So we are going to learn how to do this uh, toggle button, one which selects all of them or deselects them. And then when we are selecting uh, single ones, obviously the status of the main one changes as well. And if we now hit on export, for instance, this will return the, the, the items that we've selected. It's going to send us to a new uh, endpoint and obviously these items, we are only going to be displaying them in the browser. We're not going to be processing any of these requests actually with using database or anything like this. So if I select all of them as well, remove, you'll see the confirmation message right now is going to show after three seconds. And there we go. The following records have been removed because all of them were checked. Okay, so this is a multi checkbox. We will also learn how to do dependable drop downs. And there will be three different types. First one that doesn't make any Ajax calls. So we are loading uh, the page. Uh, and when we load the page, we're also passing the values uh, straight to the view. And obviously, when we select one item, the items in the, the following drop down will be filtered by the previous selection. So you see green, orange, yellow when we select small. When we go for medium, it's going to be blue, white, black, and so on. If I select blue, we have uh, again filtered values for the last item here. And if I change it, this will be different as well. So these do not make any Ajax call. These items will be pushed into the view when the page loads. Now, the next one will be using Ajax. So every time we select something, the, the Ajax call is being made and the values are returned based on what selection in the previous uh, dropdown has been made. So we have green, orange. If I select 12, we have brown and pink. If I do this pink, for instance, again, the values for the last one are changing. Now, with this difference between this and the next one is that with the last selection, we don't make another call because obviously the previous one will fetch all the records for the last item and we don't have to make any other uh, calls. For e-commerce website, for instance, you would also probably need to fetch the uh, price and some other things with the last selection. So this is where this Ajax with summary comes in. So we're going to select some items. You can see that at the moment we have please select all attributes to reveal the price. And once we select the last item, that makes the Ajax call to the server and gives us the price. So we will have a different price based on a different selection, obviously. Let's now dive to the next video when we start by setting up our project.